Millions of people were fooled by this fake. My 2017 image was manipulated and passed off as a NASA James Webb Space Telescope photo of the 2024 eclipse. But I observed this last solar eclipse myself in Mexico and documented it photographically. That's what it looked like. It should be clear to many that no eclipse could be seen from the James Webb Space Telescope and that the Space Telescope will never be pointed at the Sun. By the way, the color design of the picture was created by the artist Catherine Mackin, who painted my HDR photo and interpreted it artistically. Various magazines contacted me about a correction. It's really sad to see how our work has been doctored and so ends up in the wrong circles. NASA liefert uns wieder ein absolutes Spektakel. Speaking of fake, since all solar eclipses are part of the world conspiracy among flat earthers, very specific videos receive special attention. This includes this satirical video by an astro guy. But look, the moon is It consists of a few edits. In front of the sun. Wait. But the moon is over here. Why is the moon right there if it's supposed to be in front of the sun? Here, I'm using... We mentioned to the creator shortly after release. They will believe that. That is... Unfortunately, that's how it was. The desire for virality led to quite a few rebuttals. Notice the short dialogue and playful laughter at the end, which indicates that this video was intended as a joke. That can't be... Are the flatter... I don't know... Are the flat earthers right? <laughs> Maybe it is flat. This simulation of an annular solar eclipse also does not correspond to reality. A few things stand out. A strange darkening completes the sun and the moon stops. In addition, the video depicts an annular solar eclipse and not a total solar eclipse, which occurred on April 8, 2024. Many seem to misunderstand this animated illustration, which is partially flawed as a real video recording. Looking at this video, yeah, we cannot see the moon. Something suspicious with uh, this footage. This viral video has been used to assert that the glow created around the sun was oddly not covered by the moon, and therefore the moon could not be a solid object. The real eclipse happened behind us. See the light of the sun, although the moon should be a solid object, right? The glow around the sun, like all of the animation, was artificially created. Many might now be thinking about the solar corona. The corona constitutes the largest part of the solar atmosphere. However, it's not visible in the partial phase due to the extremely bright sunlight. Even when the sun is 99% obscured by the moon, it still appears daylight outside. Only when the sun is entirely obscured by the moon does it become dark. Stars come into view and the corona stands out against the sky blue. Thus, partial eclipses are not comparable to total solar eclipses. The difference is like day and night. Even during a ring-shaped solar eclipse it remains bright, while rings appear on the ground in case a leafy canopy can cast shadows, just like the pinhole camera. With totality, it's time to get rid of the filters. Through a solar filter, nothing of the delicate corona would be visible, which shines about as brightly as the full moon. That is a fact not many people are aware of. Although the new moon is only illuminated from behind by the sun, it is not completely dark. Seen from the moon, you would see the Earth fully illuminated. This so-called Earthshine reaches the moon. In this way, it is indirectly illuminated very softly. In totality, it is dark enough to be able to see this Earth light. To do this, however, the sky must be very transparent and clear. As long as the sun does not completely disappear behind the moon, there is nothing to be seen of it, as everything fades in its glaring rays. Therefore, a solar filter is necessary. The staunch flat earther would say, down with the filter, I want to see the unfiltered truth. Some actually tried this and risked their eyesight. An unprotected view through the telescope can lead to eye damage or blindness in a matter of seconds. That's particularly frustrating. A man from their own ranks, who is well versed in telescopes and streamed the total solar eclipse, also resorted to the fake video of the annular solar eclipse. David Shane, I'm hesitant to deny his expertise. Therefore, the only conclusion left is that he's intentionally fooling his community to portray the eclipse as a conspiracy in line with the flat earth narrative. As he writes himself, he wants to use donations to be able to do cosmic observations full time.
Naturally, one of the most famous flat earthers, David Weiss, also runs the whole thing as a business. The disinformation he disseminates is repeated almost word for word in the flat earth movement. This includes the nonsense narrative that the sun was darkened from behind. It's a whole nother nodal thing, dark bodies, very well might be true. But I think whatever it is that's blocking the sun is not in front of it, it's behind it. How can you seriously find out if it was the moon? Well, for one, during totality, when the skies are crystal clear, you can see the moon with its dark spots without a solar filter, and during the partial phase, the lunar mountains stand out in the profile of the sun. The edge of the moon looks like a fingerprint. From the same perspective, it matches the profile we can see even when the moon is full. That's specific. If that's not enough proof for you, the moon is not found anywhere in the sky, it is always near or on the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun, where the planets are located. After the eclipse, I was able to capture the new crescent moon from the plane. Those who tracked the moon's movement in the days around the solar eclipse from the central zone noticed a path of movement that led through the sun. The moon did not detour around the sun. The moon can be continuously observed gradually getting closer to the sun, crossing it, and moving away again on an invisible line. And in which direction does the moon move? Always from west to east. Yes, you heard right. From west to east. Because the Earth also rotates to the east, you may have a different impression. Everything seems to be moving westward, including the moon, which, however, actually moves east in relation to the fixed stars and the sun. This is due to its own movement. The faster movement to the west, which can be seen in the sky, is due to the daily rotation of the Earth. This statement will surely stir up outcry among flat Earthers. Unfortunately, their reaction often consists of insults like vaccinated sleeping sheep or the like. Flat Earthers rarely engage in arguments. You can certainly observe that here as well. Some of you might be thinking, oh man, the so-called flat earthers can't be serious, they're all just trolls. Well, the fact that flat earthers do take it seriously is evident from the lively exchange, for example, in telegram groups, and from the threats that we receive. What impresses me about flat earthers, despite everything, is that they are critical of the system, are not materialists, and endure a lot of shame for their beliefs. Yes, they sacrifice a large part of their social relationships for their subjective truth. But what's very annoying is the insistence with which they usually try to condescendingly convert others. But if you're invoking God, you're committing yourselves to what is good. If you want to save others, you should refrain from insults and demonizing. Stop dehumanizing others.